So part two. So after I told him about him not him willing to go down to a bank robbery, I told him an hour from now is going to happen, and he's willing to go and witness that and make arrests, but why wouldn't he be willing to do it against the judge in a courtroom and everybody else in the courtroom, including lawyers on my wife's side? He's like, oh. So um, I think he's actually a lieutenant. Lieutenant, uh, or maybe he's a sergeant. Uh, sergeant Carrera, I think he's a sergeant. Um, gets in the middle of it and tries to calm the situation down. There's like six six officers there, and I'm, you know, talking into the into the body camera of the police, you know, threatening to sue them all and all the rest of it. I'm going to get a public records request of the body camera, and somehow it's going to be made public. You all get to see this. Um, he says, well, you know, this, that, the other. All of a sudden, this other officer walks up, and he goes, I've been instructed. I think he said from the top or something. Maybe Marco Slope has instructed him. I don't know. He's been instructed to come into the courtroom, sit with me, I'd take my sworn affidavit and document all this and sit in the courtroom the entire hearing and take another sworn statement at the end of the hearing. Great. Wait a minute. We got a Osceola County Sheriff's officer that's willing to take a criminal complaint against the judge and everybody in the courtroom and prosecute felony per uh, felony crimes, criminal crimes against everybody. Now, nah, this sounds too good to be true. Guy's really nice. He gives me a business card. He takes, a, he takes my criminal complaint that I already drawn up in writing and sent to the sheriff and all the captains. He makes a copy of it. He gives me a copy. He comes into the courtroom. So before the judge comes out, right, the uh, clerk of the court says, you know, we're going to sworn under oath. I had a court reporter, right? And the court reporter was setting up. So the clerk of the court says to my court reporter, tell me you're ready so I can do the sworn, you know, under oath thing. So she's ready. The judge is not in the courtroom. She's late. She's like 15, 20 minutes late. And uh, she says, all right, raise your right hand. Swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, to nothing but the truth, so I'll help you God. I said, objection, objection. The judge is not even in the courtroom. I'd like this to be done with the judge in the courtroom because I object to this. She goes, what do you mean you object to this? I said, I object to this because we're swearing to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. But... My wife is a Buddhist that believes in Buddhism, Thai Buddhism, and Buddha tells her to lie, and she's a compulsive liar. So her swearing is actually committing felony perjury in this courtroom, swearing to tell the whole truth, to help, the truth to help you, God. She doesn't believe in freaking God. She believes in Buddha, and Buddha tells her to lie. <laughs> so, so the clerk says, well, she doesn't care. She's going to do it anyway. So she does it anyway. We raise the right hand, swear to the whole truth, but the truth, help you God. So after we did that, I said, I'd like to put on the record in front of the sheriff documenting all the felonies being committed in this courtroom and my court reporter to document she's just committed felony perjury because she doesn't believe in God. And she just swear on, swear on your God. She doesn't believe in God. She believes in Buddha. I get swept under the rug. So then finally the judge comes out. When the judge comes out, sits down, guess what? The sheriff that was there that was supposed to be witnessing and documenting everything and taking my my criminal complaint and witnessing the crimes that are being committed in the courtroom, the bank robbery, remember? He disappears. He goes out the back door. He's gone. He never came back. He was gone the entire hearing. This is corruption, folks, at the highest level. Wait till you hear this. And again, the body camera is going to get... Uh, public records request that it'll be released. I wouldn't be surprised if they delete the body camera at this point. So anyways, the first thing to deal with in this court hearing is a motion to disqualify. Now, I came completely underprepared. I came with my Donald Trump hat, and I came with this T-shirt, freespeechsocial.com, which will be put back online by somebody very soon where the public is going to be able to post user submitted content that is protected by section 230 user submitted post so you know it's going to be mysterious of what's going to get posted about this case and all these people from all my friends and family and the public on this website but it's not me because i'm gag i'm mean, unconstitutionally gag ordered not to post this stuff about my children including videos of my children that a lot of my friends and family have that may get posted all over this website but anyways Back to the point at hand. So the judge comes in the courtroom. She sits down. And I say, Your Honor, something, something. Oh, by the way, the transcript from the hearing 
is was recorded and it's going to end up public uh, sooner or later. I'm not going to end up. I'm not going to give it, make it public because I'm gag ordered to, right? But I'm allowed to give it to my friends and family and everybody else, and it will be made public. You'll get to hear all of it. So I don't recall all of it in detail. This is like the synopsis of it. But basically, the hearing started with case law on a motion to disqualify. After I filed the criminal complaint through email to the Sh- Marcos Lopez and all the captains and all the rest of it, I filed a motion to disqualify this judge again. Okay, I filed 11 motions to recuse this judge, denied, illegally, um, and a motion to disqualify, which a motion to disqualify sits under a different Florida statute, and you have to file a separate sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury um, and attach it to, afterwards to the motion to disqualify for it to become valid in under the Florida statute. And it actually has some case law in there for those of you who want to comment about it, read about it, that basically you just have to say that you feel you're, you get an unfair hearing and, you you know, this judge is biased. And she's to, rec- she's to recuse herself and grant the motion. And when I filed it, motion denied. Every motion I've filed in front of this judge because she hates my guts and she's illegally committing felony conspiracy involved in railroading me in this courtroom has been denied. All the motions on the other side granted, all my motions denied. I'm the rogue litigant that's going against the system and the corruption and exposing it everywhere. I'm being buried and silenced. Okay? So what ends up happening is I filed the motion to disqualify last night, and in that case law under the Florida statute, number one, it says that even if a trial court judge does not know about a motion to disqualify, during a motion to disqualify, she is not to proceed any further with any actions in the case. So right then and there, that's why I came unprepared, I didn't bring my laptop, any of the motions, nothing, this hearing should have been canceled. Last night, late, I filed a motion to disqualify. There's an open motion to disqualify. She cannot proceed in the case. Um, So I read her the case law on it in the courtroom, and I said, because of this, you cannot proceed. On top of that, uh, there's Florida statutes to support it, but more than anything, on the Osceola County website, under Holly Darenthal's procedures, it says that any... Uh, Motions that are filed within four days of a hearing are untimely and will not be ruled upon by the judge. And she personally has told me this and used this against me on motions and emergency motions in my last two hearings in front of her. So she can't rule upon it. So there's an open motion to disqualify. She cannot rule upon legally and by her own rules and her own statements in the courtroom. And on top of that, in my motion to disqualify, I say I need time to file my sworn affidavit under penalty of perjury to follow the Florida statute under this motion to disqualify so she can't proceed, right? Then she turned around, she interrupt me, she said, Mr. Sewani, I've just in chambers signed a denial order. It's already been denied. That's why she was late to 15, 20 minutes in the courtroom, right? So she's violated the law, violated Florida statute, violated her own rules on her webs- uh, the Osceola County website of her court rules and everything else, illegally denying my motion to disqualify to give her power to proceed in this fucking hearing. Can you believe this shit? This is how corrupt this judge is. She doesn't care about the law. She doesn't care about constitutional law. She doesn't care about Florida statute law. She doesn't care about criminal law. She's given full reign by the chief judge her colleague judge, Christy Collins, the Osceola County Sheriff, and everybody else to do whatever she wants. She doesn't care about any laws and railroad me. And this is what she proceeded to do. She says, your motion's been denied. There's going to be no discussion. Da, da, da. We're going to proceed with this hearing. So at that time, read part three. I'm going to cut this video and do part three.